Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Habitual Line Crosser. Now we are on part two of the history of air defense. I hope you enjoyed part one, because I enjoyed telling you guys about it. Gather round, kiddos. Let me grab, I don't have a book. I have some books back there. I don't feel like grabbing a book. But anyways, so we left off at the MIM-14 Hercules and the M-42 Duster. So right around this time, the United States realized that we need to be able to shoot down jets and we need to be able to shoot down ballistic missiles, which is a concept that no one else in the world had ever tried. So the Nike program, not to be outdone, decided, all right, let's create a new missile. We're going to take what we learned from the Nike Hercules and we're going to create the Nike Zeus. Side point, I fucking love the names of Nike missiles. They just, they sound so fucking cool. Whoever came up with those, thank you. I appreciate you. So the Nike Zeus came out. Its job was to be able to engage exoatmospheric ballistic missiles. That means missiles that are outside of the atmosphere. Something that hasn't happened in combat until recently with Israel's uh, Aero 2, I think is what it was. Shot one outside of the, uh, the atmosphere, which is super cool. But America was doing this, preparing to do this, in the 1960s, Nike Zeus came around, they were working on it, it went way over budget, and in 1963, President Kennedy had decided, I'm gonna cancel the Nike Zeus, and we're gonna move on to what's next. They put a lot of money into something called the Nike X. But also around that time, they put a bunch of money into what was called the Nike Spartan, which unfortunately was never deployed, but it took everything that they had learned from the Nike Zeus and just did it gooder. So the Nike Zeus was capable of reaching 250 nautical miles off the Earth's surface, which is way up there. This is way up there, okay? 290 regular American miles, or if you've lost a world war, 460 kilometers. That's a long way to throw a missile, but these missiles are also like shrunken down Saturn V rockets. They're huge, they're enormous. The Nike Spartan was able to reach 450 nautical miles off the Earth's surface. That is 520 American miles or 830 kilometers. That is like double the space station. We were preparing for space combat in this time. Oh my God, I forgot. I forgot the story about the Nike Hercules. So in my job, modern day Patriot, we do something called a stray no volts test. What it does is it makes sure that there's no stray voltage anywhere inside the lines because a little spark can set off a missile. We know this happens because in 1970, like 71, 72, on the island of Okinawa, there was a Nike Hercules that was in the stored position and stray voltage from a person arced to it. And it set it off horizontal across the island of Okinawa. It killed two people and they had to go fish it out of the ocean. So yeah, another nuclear weapon in Japan. It's, it's such a bad joke. It's, I'm gonna say it anyways, fuck it. You gotta bless our aim, I'm telling you. <laughs> Three nukes, same country. We, at least, in <laughs> case they thought we were sorry. Fuck, all right. Where the hell? It... Kid. What? What do you want? I was busy sharpening my wings. Where is my new gamer subs? I think it's a little screwed up that you think I would take it. Because the name of the new gamer subs is raw meat and and I have a sinking suspicion that you would take it. Okay, fine. It was me. I took it. But but you have a promo code that you can use. Everybody has a promo code. Anyone can use it. You can use it. They can use it. All they have to do is go to the link in the description of this video or they go to Gamersup's website and they put in their own promotion code, which is HABIT, and we go from uh, there. Thank you so much. But I also don't have a credit card, so can you buy me some more? Did you drink all of it? Yes. What did it taste like? It tasted sweet. Like the sweet release of finally intercepting somebody. That was the Nike Spartan program, and that one just kind of went by the wayside. So what we did is we hang on, we held on to our Nike Hercules. The Nike Hercules is the most widely produced air defense system that has ever existed. There was over 200 Nike sites in the U.S. alone. The Nike Hercules is everywhere. Everywhere that the U.S. was, there was Nike Hercules sites. You can still see many of them to this day. It is a enormous missile and I'm sure you've seen it. We decided that was gonna be our upper for ballistic missile. We did a whole bunch of updates to it and we just stayed with the Nike Hercules. And then we came out with the Hawk missile system. Now the Hawk was designed for anti-aircraft. It was kind of the lower tier. By lower tier, I mean elevation. I don't mean like quality. It did have the ability to do anti-ballistic missile, kind of. So the United States built the Hawk missile, which looks 
oddly similar to the ones you see in the first Iron Man movie. Yeah, they took Hawk missiles. Those are air defense missiles. Those are not some weird, crazy cluster munition Jericho thing. No, they're not. They're not. They're just, they're, they're fucking Hawk missiles, which drives me insane as a goddamn air defender when I see them. Anyways, so the Hawk enter system entered with the United States military in 1959, and we held it around for quite a long time until it was replaced by Patriot. Now, Hawk apparently is an acronym, but I've talked to Hawk guys, and none of them have said that this is a real acronym, so I have a feeling they did the same thing like they did with Patriot. Hawk apparently stands for Homing All the Way Killer. That's stupid. That's a stupid acronym. Whoever came up with I, I'm glad we don't use the Hawk anymore. That's a dumb acronym. Hawk was replaced by the MIM 104 Patriot system, which is still in use by the United States today. It's my system. It's the one that I've been trained on. It's the one I utilized, but it's not the same system that came out in the late 1980s. It has gone through hundreds of hardware and software changes since that time. I will tell you that the first ever, this is, this is the first time it ever happened. Remember that was a guided missile was engaged by another guided missile was U.S. Patriot in Saudi Arabia in 1991. No one can take that title. Fucking back-to-back -back World War champions, the first people planning to shoot shit out of, out of space, and we were the first ones that ever shot down a missile. Suck it. I will tell you this, in 1991, the Patriot system was not very effective. It had an efficiency rating of about 25%, which is awful for an air defense system. Fast forward to 2003, when it went back and we'd done all those updates, it had an efficiency rate over 90%, which is about standard in the air defense world. You want over 90% PK. Obviously, the optimal would be 100%, but pff, let's be realistic. So that brings us all the way to modern day air defense systems for high mad air defense is broken down into two categories you have high mad which is high to medium air defense and you have shore rad which is short range air defense this also includes when we're talking about high mad this includes patriot this includes thad or terminal high altitude area defense or is it area air defense thad guys help me out i've seen both on the internet i just can never remember that damn acronym uh aegis which is the Navy's uh, combat system, which is on board the Arleigh Burke class destroyers and the Ticonderoga class cruisers. However, the Ticonderogas are going to go away, so we're just going to be stuck with Arleigh Burks. It was supposed to be on the Zumwalt, but yeah, we know what happened there. What the fuck, Navy? And then you also have the SBX, which is the sea based X band radar. If you've ever seen the movie Interceptor, which is awful, that movie was bad and they should feel bad. Just awful. SBX is the sea based X band radar. What does that one watch? What does that one do? It watches the Pacific, the whole thing, at the same time. Did I mention we make the best radars in the world? I just, just wasn't sure if I mentioned that. I just, yeah, the whole fucking thing is watched by that radar. Now, granted, its fidelity isn't as great as some of the closer ones, but still. And then, of course, you have GMD, which is the ground-based mid-course defense, which is the United States Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Defense. That is only in the United States. Chances are you've driven past GMD sites. You've probably seen them. Um, you just don't know what they are. And they are designed to protect the United States from intercontinental ballistic missiles. That brings us up to everything we have for HIMAD. Let's go and talk about SHORAD. So remember we talked about the M42 Duster. The M42 Duster wasn't supposed to work. It really wasn't. It wasn't supposed to do anything. They built it and they're like, this is dumb, let's get rid of it. So then they brought in this thing called the Mauler. The Mauler is a missile system that is on board of a 113. It's pretty much a toaster retract. It's an ugly little fucking thing, but we still use them to this day. So they brought out the Mauler. The Mauler was even worse. So like the M42 was like, this is bad. They should feel bad. And then they saw the Mauler and they're like, this is worse. This is so much worse. So then they went back with <laughs> the M42 Duster and they used that for all of Vietnam and it went all the way up to uh, 1988 was the last time that they were in service. But that didn't stop the United States from trying to innovate. Around this time, we also created, or a little bit after Vietnam, we created the VADS, the Vulcan Air Defense System. And yes, the Vulcan is the same Vulcan you're thinking of, the 20 millimeter chain gun that is on board most American aircraft. And they just put it on a 113 and said, shoot down planes with it. Doesn't work that way. However, it did work really well in Panama, mowing down everything. They used them for convoy security. They were just like, we can't shoot down planes, but guess what? See that village? You don't see it anymore, do you? Okay, they probably didn't shoot fields. I Look, I don't know about, much about Panama, okay? Give me a break. So this led to the development of saying, hey, we need lead slingers, bullets, guns, that can use radars and shoot down planes and lead targets. And so Ford came together and they were like, we want this contract and we're gonna build the M247 Sergeant York. It's actually a really cool thing, but it had the, the story of it is so much funnier. It was uh, number one, heavy as fuck over 60 tons. It was enormous, right? Number two, it uh, went way over budget by billions. But 
they didn't skip all the you know the fancy racing flames and, and the racing stripes and shit on this thing they wanted to make something totally badass so what did they do they took a radar from an f-16 and they're like we're gonna make this thing able to use its guns based on radar and we're like oh that's cool what about a fallback and they're like well we want it to also be able to be a heat seeker so they put some onboard system that allowed it to track heat and then one day they brought out a whole bunch of politicians and they brought out sergeant alvin york's his widow she was there and she they're like this is what your husband's name is tied to if you guys don't know who Sergeant Alvin York is, please go Google that. But so they're like, we're going to we're going to do this for you and your husband. And this is what happened, which is the funniest shit I've ever fucking heard. OK, so they, they brought out a Huey, a UH-1 Huey that was remote controlled. Yeah, America's been doing this for a long time. Like, we're going to shoot it down. They built four of these Alvin Yorks. And they're like, we're going to shoot it down with this thing. Right. So they got the guy on the controls. and They're like, all right, go ahead and turn it on. And when they turn on the radar, the radar is supposed to detect the, the spinning blades of this helicopter and lock onto it and shoot it down. Should have been a no brainer. But the system also prioritizes threat so if it detects something closer to it that is doing the same motion it thinks that's the threat so they kicked on the radar and they're like here we go right behind the sergeant york happened to be a little spinning metal fan on top of the portageon and it thought that was the threat quick as shit it literally ripped the guy off of the controls and spun completely around and pointed its guns at the portageon which i thought that would have been good enough for the story but oh it gets so much better it gets so much better so they're like hey look we got some kinks to work out with the radar we need to go ahead and do the heat seeker version they're like yeah that's great we'll use heat seeker so they they, they bring the the huey around for another pass and they're like all right we're gonna use heat seeker let's do this and they turn on the heat seeker well what's interesting is right next to the sergeant york uh happened to be these bleachers that all these uh politicians and sergeant york's wife were sitting on on a hot summer day don't get ahead of me we know what's about to happen and it detected that threat very very close and the Sergeant York turned and pointed its guns directly at a bleacher full of politicians and Sergeant Alvin York's widow. Needless to say, the project was gone after that, and all your funding dries up pretty quick when you point 40 millimeter Bofors at politicians. They don't like that shit. The U.S. didn't really get our first tried and true air defense system that could be a missile that was used for short range air defense until the Stinger came around in, in the late 1980s. We got this little man portable Stinger missile and you lock onto the heat, send it away and it travels at Mach 2.2. It was really good at what it did. So America being America, they're like, mm, let's put it on the truck. So they took a Humvee and then they put two pods on the sides of this weird capsule thing and they called it the Avenger. And the Avenger also had a 50 cal on the side and it was like, cool, we're going to use this thing. We had to prove its worth, right? Just like the Sergeant York story. So when they came out with the Avenger, they took three people who had never, never fired a Stinger, never used the Avenger, never been trained on it. And they're like, all right, you're going to shoot down this drone. And three people, one person came up, they fired it, shot down the drone. Second person came up at night, shot down the drone. Third person was within the kill radius. So they call it a technical kill. And after that, the system was good to go they were doing some of these shots at 20 miles an hour driving a humvee at 20 miles an hour for those of you who've ridden in a humvee you know what it's like driving at 20 miles an hour in a humvee and if you if you can shoot something down while moving at those speeds in a humvee that's a damn good system i got nothing wrong with it the avenger is still technically in use to this day although it's being transferred over to the national guard the united states military also took a bradley an m2 bradley and they put stingers on the side of it and they call it the m6 bradley linebacker and the linebacker it was the right program the wrong time because it was used in iraq and afghanistan and the enemy didn't really have any air cover so you were just wasting space at that point in time so they canned the bradley linebacker program until very recently they're bringing it back i just found out like a month ago that bae systems out here just got a contract to bring the bradley linebacker back also in current use for our short range air defense we happen to have the you guys call it the c-ram but to everybody else it is the lpws the land-based phalanx weapons System. It is R2-D2 with a really bad attitude. But where would a video about the history of air defense be if I didn't go over what's coming next? So we'll go to HIMAD first. HIMAD has the LTAMs coming out, which is the lower tier air and missile defense sensor. This radar is a bad bitch. Trust me, if, if Raytheon delivers everything that they promised me, me, I was out there. I fucking picked this goddamn one. If they deliver everything that they promised, that's gonna be a bad bitch. That's a scary fucking radar. And by the way, if you ever see a billboard somewhere or somebody calls it the ghost eye radar, you need to haze them. You have my permission. Haze that person. We will never call it the ghost eye, Raytheon. Whoever, whoever decided to call that radar the ghost eye, fire them, hire them back, make sure they get all settled in and then fire them again just for good measure, okay? God, I'm never gonna call that shit the ghost eye. Might as well call it the whispering eye. Anyways, we also have IBCS, which is a really cool concept. IBCS is the Integrated Air Missile Defense Battle Command System, which is an acronym within an acronym. God damn it, Uncle Sam. You could have called it anything cooler. The, the Missile McMissile Face Missile Defense System. I don't know. But the idea behind that is any shooter, any sensor. Best shooter, best sensor, best shooter, best effector. Really, check Northrop Grumman's 
website. They change it by week, okay? But the concept behind that is it networks all of Americans air, America's air defense systems in together. So theoretically, you could fire a Stinger off of an Aegis site picture. You could fire a SM-6 off of a Patriot Air picture. You could fire a Talon, which is a THAAD missile, off of a, uh, a Sentinel radar. I don't know if you ever would, but you could. So it would be whoever has the best look at it, which is the radar, and whoever has the best probability of kill, which is the missile. Now, moving forward back to our, our friends in short-range air defense, we have two new systems that are coming online. They're actually both fully produced, and they are in the United States military arsenal, but I still consider them a bit of a future weapon. That is the M Shorad platform. M Shorad stands for Maneuver Short Range Air Defense. There are two versions. There is the K, which is the kinetic. This bad boy on board a striker happens to boast eight Stinger missiles, a 7.62 coaxial machine gun, and a 30 mic mic, just in case you need to do 30 mic mic things with it. And the other one is the Directed Energy Maneuver Short Range Air Defense, or DEM Shorad for short. Yes, I'm talking about frickin' lasers. So for all you guys who are in my comment section, the British have a laser and it's really, it's, it's really something, isn't it? And it's like, no, it's not. We've been doing this shit for a long time. We have lasers on board our Aegis. We have lasers on board our fucking strikers. Frickin' strikers with frickin' laser beams on their head. And that brings us all the way up to the future program. So if you have any questions about any of the systems I've gone over, any of the history, please ask more. I tried keeping these videos as short and to the point as I possibly could, but there's a lot of history out there and I really wanted to make sure you guys could capture it and understand what kind of history there is to air defense artillery. So as always, do not give in to the 22 a day. Every single one of you are amazing, and I will see you guys right here next time. If you'd like to support the channel or get yourself some merch, please go to habituallinecrosser.com. Play me out.